Steelers, Dolphins, Browns, or Texans. When the Baltimore Ravens come off of their bye week and head into the divisional round, they will be facing one of those four teams, whoever is the lowest remaining seed. And the thing about it, when we're watching Wild Card Weekend uh, this upcoming Saturday and Sunday and then Monday too, um, then the Baltimore Ravens, they got to wait just a little bit because Saturday the Chiefs and the Dolphins play, and on Saturday the Texans and the Browns play. But no matter what happens in those two games, the Baltimore Ravens still won't officially know their opponent because they have to wait until about 4.30 on Sunday. That's when they'll officially know who they're going to be playing in a divisional round because the Steelers, they play the Bills. And with the Steelers, they are the seventh seed, so they are the lowest seed. So if they somehow can beat the Buffalo Bills, then the Baltimore Ravens will be playing them. But if not, then they will play the lowest seed that remains out of the previous two games. But we'll get into all that. We'll talk about these playoffs and everything that we got coming up. But before we get into it, Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for 72,000 subscribers because this is all of us. This ain't me. I ain't doing nothing special. It's really y'all. So I appreciate y'all being so special. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Keep on subscribing to the channel. Turn the notifications on so when we drop a video, you don't miss a thing. And also keep leaving a like on the video because it helps a ton. Y'all have been helping a ton. I appreciate y'all. Y'all been leaving more likes on the videos than ever. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And let's get back to these playoffs. So. As we know, uh, Steelers versus Bills, Dolphins versus Chiefs, Browns versus Texans. There's been a lot of conversation amongst Ravens fans on who they would prefer to play, who they would not prefer to play, who they may be a little afraid of, who makes them a little bit nervous. And I respect each and every conversation. But the way I look at it, yeah, there are some teams that make you a little more nervous than other ones. But for me, it really, every game makes me nervous because it's playoff time. Like, it ain't no, all right, we're going to get better next week and we'll fix that. No, 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 no. It's one and done. It ain't no, all right, we're going to make a couple of adjust adjustments and next week we'll get them, we'll get them better, much better. No, it ain't none of that. Once you lose in the playoffs, your season is done. Now, while I don't anticipate the Baltimore Ravens losing in the playoffs, it's still a nervous feeling going into each and every playoff game. But when it comes to the conversation about, oh, which team you prefer to face, which team you don't prefer to face, for me, like, every game would make me nervous because it's a playoff game. But – the way I look at it is from a bit of a different point of view. The way I look at it is like, all right, you could be nervous to face that team because of this. You could be nervous to face that team because of that. And they all do bring their own different characteristics and qualities and whatnot. But these teams, they got to play the Ravens. Like, the, I know we ain't forget that. The Baltimore Ravens were not only the best team in the AFC North this year. They weren't only the best team in the AFC Conference. They were the best team in the NFL this year. They had the best record in the NFL this year. And another thing that gives me even more confidence with these Baltimore Ravens is just the way that they've been doing things in big moments. When they've gone up against good teams, playoff teams, winning teams, they step up to the occasion big time. They really show out big time. And they really put some of their best feet forward big time. And you can even say in some of those games against some of those playoff teams, minus the Miami Dolphins, the Ravens would put up 30-some points a game, put up these crazy amount of points a game, and they would be leaving a lot of points out there on the field. Again, I did exclude the Dolphins because in the Dolphins game, that was one of the only games where the Baltimore Ravens offense did not leave points out there on the field. <laughs> they put it all out there, so shout out to the Ravens. But think about that. Like Again, not only do these playoff teams, they got to play the Baltimore Ravens, but – they got to play the Baltimore Ravens at the crib, at M&T Bank Stadium. So going against the team is already tough enough, but you got to go against them at their house? Ooh, that makes it that much tougher. So, again, I, I get people being nervous about this team and that team and that team, but those teams, they got to be nervous about us. Now, uh, some of the teams that I have heard uh, the most concern with amongst a lot of Ravens fans uh, have been the Bills and the Chiefs. Also the Browns, too. Um, but definitely the Bills and the Chiefs. But specifically with uh, Buffalo and Kansas City. Uh, if the Baltimore Ravens do, do end up playing either one of those teams, it will not be, obviously won't be for the Divisional. They can only meet one of those two teams uh, in the AFC Championship match. So obviously to get to the AFC Championship, one of those two teams got to win. And the Baltimore Ravens got to take care of their business, too. And I, I do expect that to end up being the case. Uh, I expect Baltimore Ravens to take care of their business for sure. Um, but I, I feel like with when you look at a lot of these other AFC teams, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. The thing that they have on their side, in my opinion, 
is experience. They got the most experience uh, because they have been to all these AFC championships recently, too. They've been to all these Super Bowls recently, too. So they are the definition of winning. But this year, they look very, very shaky. Very, very shaky. Uh, and this is probably the most beatable. I mean, every team is beatable, but this is the most beatable Kansas City Chiefs team, in my opinion. And I know playoffs is a different atmosphere, uh, but still, Kansas City Chiefs have been real shaky. Buffalo Bills. They are an extremely hot and cold team. Uh, Josh Allen, amazing quarterback, can do everything. But, boy, that boy can turn that ball over, too. He is a, a live by, die by the turnover. He, like, that boy will take some risk. And I respect it. I respect Josh Allen's game. He's tough. Uh, but, boy, he, he will be hot and cold, man. But he presents the Buffalo Bills. They present some big challenges. I mean, we could go down the list. I mean, you know what we're talking about? We might as well already do it. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers as a seventh seed. Uh, they, of course, they did sweep the Ravens technically. Hey, they got two wins versus the Ravens this year. Uh, and one of those was with Lamar Jackson. We know that was the famous drop game, but hey, still, the Steelers still won. They got it done. Uh, they are a team that they will look ugly. For four, ugly for four, for three quarter, three and a half quarters even. Then in the fourth quarter, it's something about that fourth quarter where they just end up turning it on just a, just a little bit. Now I know they ain't got Kenny Pickett no more. Well, they got him, but he ain't playing. Uh, so Mason Rudolph, he may end up. Uh, he's gonna be their starter uh, for the playoffs. But um, so we'll see about that one. Uh, the Dolphins, the Dolphins, they got so much speed. On offense, and they should be getting healthier. They should be getting Raheem Mostert back. Uh, they should be getting Jalen Waddle back come playoff time. Um, and they just have that threat of scoring just like that. One thing, though, somebody pointed out that with Tua, they said with Tua with his off script stuff that he just can't do it. Uh, if, if everything ain't perfect for Tua, then it just messes everything up. And I thought that was very, very interesting and something that I never thought of before because I know with Tua, he's a timing guy. Everything is about timing. When Tua's on the money, he put it right at the perfect spot for the where the receiver's going to be at in that time. But if that time is thrown off, then that's where Tua, he's thrown off. The Cleveland Browns, January Joe. I know that's been a big talk from a lot of people. January Joe Flacco, they, they got a really, really great defense. I think the number two defense, because I believe the Baltimore Ravens had the number one. One, But the Browns, the defense and Joe Flacco, um, nothing to lose. Joe Flacco, too. And again, when he came to the Browns, like, it was dangerous already because he was their fourth quarterback. And with him being their fourth quarterback, it's like, okay, what y'all expect from me? Y'all just signed me. I ain't been playing all year. So there were low expectations, but there was high delivery. So, but with him, he is, he be throwing some turnovers too. He be throwing some picks. Now he will throw them deep balls, throw them touchdowns too, but he'll for sure throw some picks as well. But Flacco showed that, hey, I can still make some stuff happen. And with Houston, Houston has been an interesting team. I know we played them in week one, but they are a much different team than they were in week one. And with Stroud, man, he um he takes care of the ball. He'll throw a pick every now and then, but he really takes care of the ball. He ain't afraid to throw that ball down the field, which I appreciate about his game. He's very smart uh, with his game. The thing that the Baltimore Ravens got over them, experience. Experience. They're they a very young team, uh, They but they turned it around quick. Which I've been surprised. If you would have asked me before this season, I would definitely not have said, oh, Houston Texans, they're going to be in the playoffs. So, yeah, but, um, but the Baltimore Ravens, they're they going to have to face whoever. You can't run from nobody. You can't be scared of nobody because this is playoff time. You, ha you are facing the best of the best. These are the seven best teams in the – well, at least the seven best teams that made the playoffs. Can't always say that they're the seven best teams. But these are the seven best teams in each conference – and in order to get to where you want to go to the Super Bowl, you have to play and beat the best in your conference. And then in the other conference, in order to win the Super Bowl, you got to beat the best, whoever survives. So it, it, it ain't no running. It ain't no being scared or anything like that. The Ravens got to take care of their business. They know what's ahead of them. They know what they got to do. And it's just a matter of getting it done. Now, something that the Baltimore Ravens have gotten done is having a historic defense this year. It's crazy to say that in the year 2023, well, season 2023, year 2024, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, that anybody can have a historic defense. Uh, and the thing that they did that I don't think has ever been done before, the Triple Crown defense. They are the first defense to lead in three different categories as follows. Uh, they were first in sacks with 60, 60 sacks this year. Sometimes I don't even get 60 sacks in Madden. Uh, they were also first in points per game allowed with allowing 16 and a half points per game. That's amazing. In this day and age of football, 
With when offense is everything and the NFL pushes offense, they want off the, all the rules favor offense. That's amazing. And, and also they were tied for first in takeaways with 31. Uh, who they were tied with, I want to say it's the Cleveland Browns, but I'm not 1,000% sure, but it's probably them. But either way, the Baltimore Ravens are triple crown winners, and that has never been done before. So Mike McDonald, you know some teams going to be trying to talk to him. You, you know they will. But we'll see how the Baltimore Ravens handle that. We'll see how Mike McDonald handles that. But wait till after the playoffs. Uh, anyway, the, something that we can talk about that happens way after the playoffs, happens way next season, is the Baltimore Ravens' opponents because their opponents are official now. They know exactly who they're going to play, so y'all can start putting it in your head, which games you want to go to, which away games you want to travel to. And let's just read it off. Their opponents at the crib, obviously the Steelers, obviously the Bengals, and obviously the Browns. So that's the AFC North opponents. But they also will be playing the Broncos, the Raiders, the Eagles, the Commanders, so Battle of the Beltway, and those Buffalo Bills. Ooh, that should be a good one. Well, I mean, all of these, they, they could really be good ones. So those are the people who the Ravens are going to be playing at m and Bank Stadium. Now, away, they will be playing, uh, of course, the Steelers, the Bengals, and Browns, obviously. But they'll be playing the Chiefs in Kansas City. And I was just telling my wife, when I, when, when I saw that the, uh, the opponents officially came out and they would be playing the Chiefs, I said, oh, yeah, that, that is going to be a primetime game, whether it's Sunday night, Monday night, I don't think they're going to put that on Thursday Night Football. I think that that's going to go to the big leagues. And I don't know, Amazon is a big league, but that's going to go to ESPN or NBC. It's going to one of those. Um, they also play the Chargers on the road, the Cowboys, another primetime game. I mean, every single Cowboys game be on TV anyway. So that's guaranteed to be on there too. Uh, the Giants, the Texans, and the Buccaneers. So shout out to all the Florida Ravens fans that's going to be coming through to that Bucks game. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, now, um, in some other historic news, because this was one of the Baltimore Ravens' best plays in the history of their franchise, in my opinion. Um, Tylen Wallace. When Tylen Wallace and the Baltimore Ravens played the Rams, and that game was just, oh, that game was everything, man. Wow. Just even thinking about it gets you stressed out. But um, that game... Ravens were down. Uh, they were getting run all over. Uh, they had to come back. There was that third and 17 where Lamar threw the touchdown to Zay Flowers in crunch time. And, and then right after that, went right back to him for a two-point conversion with a guy draped all over his leg. Man, get that dude the MVP. Anyway, um, Tylen Wallace in that game, it went to overtime. Uh, and the Rams were punting the ball. So everybody think, oh, Tylen Wallace is back there. Hopefully he could break one off, but if not, okay, let's go offense. But Tylen Wallace, he broke it off, and he broke it off for a touchdown. But that touchdown was so special because it was NFL Red Zone's number one play of the year. Tylen Wallace is punt returning overtime against the Rams, and that play, it, I, I get why it was number one. It just it makes too much sense because of the play, not only the play itself, but the conditions the circumstances, what the situation was of that game that made that play that much more epic and that much more important. So shout out to Tylen Wallace, man. Also, um, and some head coaching news because the commanders, of course, as expected, they fired Ron Rivera. So they've been requesting interviews for everybody, for new GM, for new head coach, for everything. They, they, they've been asking this person, that person. But they requested permission to interview Ravens assistant uh, head coach and D-line coach Anthony Weaver, former Baltimore Ravens player as well. Um, but they requested to interview him for their head coaching job, uh, and that came from Adam Schefter. So a lot going on with these Baltimore Ravens. As usual, y'all know how it goes, uh, but it's a lot more to come. Team, keep it clean. This should be a fun week. I know Ravens fan, we're going to be a little extra chill this week and whatnot, but it's still plenty to talk about. We got questions from subscribers coming up very soon this week uh, and just everything else, any other updates that go on with the Baltimore Ravens, anything that impacts or affects the Baltimore Ravens, you know we got y'all covered. I love y'all. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and also leave a like on the video. Team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all so much for everything that y'all do on a consistent basis. I love you. I hope you are having a great start to your week. Let's get it.